Hello everybody, I hope you're all well today. As always, if it's the first time watching our channel or you're a regular viewer, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It's interactions like that that help this channel stay well up in the YouTube rankings and just as if not more importantly, it's customers, not just visitors to our web website, our Optics Weekend or phoning us up for further advice that help this channel continue. And I can keep coming up with new ideas like I'm doing today. But on this occasion, you cannot buy this scope in the link in the description below. You might be able to buy one, but not from me. And it is a, a modified TAL 4-inch refractor, uh, uh, F10. And uh, you can probably tell what I've done to it already uh, with all this um, blue. I think it's like camping matting. Uh, so don't laugh, but what I did, oh, many years ago was... It didn't come with a dew shield, so I, I made one. And then I thought, well, got a bit of spare mat in here, let's do the rest of it. And so I did. So it's, uh, yeah, just a bit of a, a, a laugh, but uh, there, there, there we are. And it's, as you can see, this HEQ5 mount, which is a, an absolute beast of a mount, looks like a rat's been chewing on it but this has been well well used it still functions as it, as it should do very good for tracking but I've had it and, and the scope for about 25 years and you'll also notice that I've not got the counterweight on but to be honest with you unless I'm putting my Tal Clevsov on Clevsov my 8 inch there's no need for it it balances up very 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 easily and so this is the scope that I use for a lot of my observing it's very good on the moon and planets last night um, I, I looked at, at Mars and my word the polar ice caps were crystal clear uh, and some of the um, the the darker surfaces on the planet at a hundred magnification you don't need three four five hundred magnification if you've got the clarity just put this back Talking of clarity, when I first got the scope I had before this, the other long tube one I had was the Skywatcher Evo Star 120, which is a, a similar le length tube. And despite this being smaller, a 4 inch, the, it has much less chromatic aberration to the Skywatcher and, and a much sharper image. I am well impressed with it. Um, this is one of the older OTAs, and the focuser, it's yeah, it's it's not the best, but it stays in place. It, it it's not silky smooth. The eyepiece that I've got on there, oh, um, the the Vixen Lanthanum 22 millimeters, ideal for for general use. And but the one I used for my planets and my double stars is my TMB 10 millimeter monocentric. Uh, I think they go for ridiculously high amounts of money now. When I got one over 20 years ago, it was, I think, £160. So with, with this, with the HEQ5 mount, you can just maybe see there, it, it already has the polar scope built in it. But to be honest with you, I'm, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to setting up. You know, I, I, I point it, um, by pointing it, I mean that there, I point that north, towards the North Star and um, providing I'm not doing too much imaging that, that uh, yeah it, it's ideal it keeps everything in the center perfectly it does have a little hand control it comes with can't probably quite see it let's just have a look uh, round here the, the, it is threaded for, to take a t-ring and uh, I'll just leave it there for a second and uh, after looking at Mars the other night or last night and I'll probably put the photographs of uh, some deep uh, space objects, deep sky objects that I took with this scope only like 15-20 seconds or so because I'd been lazy and hadn't properly polar aligned that was about, about as much as I can do but, but if, I, if I do take my time with polar alignment I can, I can do much longer exposures than that and I got some really nice images of Aldebaran and uh, I think it's Mintaka, is it the double star in Orion very very uh, e easily with this. It does come with a hot shoe um, mount there but to be honest with you the field of view is so wide with this eyepiece you don't need to find a scope and it's 
uh, I believe these were made in Russia, correct me if I'm wrong, when they were uh, uh, distributed by Optical Vision. Uh, so they really do, yeah, they're a very, very solid piece of kit. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to last me a lifetime. So it's, it's a great little scope. I say little scope after, after saying that. Uh, it's probably gets used more than my 12 inch Dobsonian. Um, but yeah, you don't, with it being a 12 inch, you have to do your know, collimation quite a lot. But this one, if you can find one of these TAL 4 inch refractors online, and uh, a, a lot of them nowadays have a, a much, the, the later models had a much improved focuser. But the, for splitting double stars, planetary and lunar work, but, but also deep space, it, it really is a cracking scope. So I can't on this occasion say, please click on the link on the description be below to buy one. By all means, click on the link in the description below and have a look and nosy around our website or pop along for a natter at our Optics Weekends. But if you can pick up one of these, and believe me, they are white, not blue, um, then you're going to have a, a, a cracking scope. And this one, uh, when I bought the mount, it was actually, even then, it was a slight second. It had, on the other side, you can't see it, but it had missing plates. A, a lot of the, the bolts and things have, have been replaced. Um, it's a homemade uh, dovetail plate. And the objective lens in the telescope has a small chip on one side, which is totally invisible uh, when you're looking through the eyepiece. So that's it. That's a quick look at my, my own personal uh, TAL 4-inch refractor, uh, F10. I've already showed you my 25 times 100, binoc 100 binoculars, and uh, I may show you one of my other, one or two of my other telescopes that I use uh, as well uh, uh, at some point. So as always. I hope this uh, helps and uh, we shall see you next time.